Good evening. Welcome to Tuesdays at 8, our Facebook Live event on Tuesday evenings. We've been spending the past few weeks talking about the movable adventure. That's what we're going to be speaking about tonight. I'm Diane Mara. I'm a visual faith coach. I'm the webmaster and I'm the social media brand manager for Visual Faith Ministries. And tonight my guest is Justin Rosso. Did I say it right this time? Perfect. Okay, good. <laughs> and we're going to be discussing obviously the movable adventure pathways for transformation. And Justin and I are going to be discussing how to engage in the walking with adventure. So I thought we would start off by let's just give you a few seconds to think about where you are in your pathway for spiritual transformation. Mm. Okay. Let me put. Have you ever wondered if your spiritual life can be more more peace, more joy, more room for God in your life? Have you ever wondered why life is so difficult sometimes? Struggles emerge, pain assaults, fears take over, and God feels distant. Have you ever wanted to be changed, to be present with God more consistently? to enjoy a vibrant prayer and worship life, to serve God with all that he has created in you, to know you are following Jesus rather than going your own way. The movable adventure is made to address these spiritual life issues. God has already established pathways and practices that can help. Join the adventure as together we walk with the Lord and allow his spirit to transform us. So I think that's the perfect lead in to my question for you, Justin. You get to answer the question to start off this evening with, how would you explain what the movable adventure is? Oh, thanks. Thanks, Dan. That's a great question. Uh, you, you probably have more expertise in that area than I do, and I've heard how you explain it. But I guess uh, for me, I would talk when I talk about the movable adventure, I would say it's my friends at Visual Faith Ministry back doing their thing. I mean, whenever I get to see Visual Faith Ministry people do something, it's fun, it's engaging, it's designed intentionally to help you follow Jesus. Uh, it has options involved. There's not a lot of burden. It really helps you just kind of discover a new way. And if that doesn't work for you, they say, that's okay, try, try this instead. Mm -hmm. So uh, all of those kind of attitudes that I've always experienced from Visual Faith Ministry are wrapped up in this movable adventure. I love that you guys decided, you know, we did this abide retreat online and we had more people than we knew what to do with. And we had more content than we could really pack into a single day. And, and this insight that if we give people uh, access for a whole year to a series of, I think there's what, over 40 videos? over 47. 47. 47 now. Yes. That's that's incredible. And, you know, not all of them are hour long or anything, but mm -hmm. the, the variety of people that are just lifting the curtain a little bit, showing you how they have struggled and failed, but also found excitement and joy in following Jesus, giving you a new tool in the bag. I mean, I, I just love that you, you are giving people uh, examples and a chance to try some things out over the course of a whole year, not just a long weekend. So uh, I would say the movable adventure is visual faith ministry doing its thing, trying something new and inviting other people along. And I think it's awesome. Well, that's a great explanation. And let me just add, um, it's really one of a kind. It, it, it doesn't exist really on the internet at this point. You could go and um, sign up for like an online retreat for a day or two days or three days. There was just one for Bible Journaling Ministries um, had a three-day one. Uh, you could go to face-to-face. -to -face. People still are starting to do that. You could do virtual summit, which could be three to five days. But all of those are characterized by the one thing that Justin just said. You start, you say, I'm going to do this for these three days. When it's done, you're done. And when we talked about what our topic was, spiritual transformation, that doesn't happen in five minutes. It right. doesn't happen in one day. It doesn't even happen in three days. It really is the Holy Spirit working in you. And that's why this is a year long and we had to call it an adventure because there's no other word to kind of describe it. Um, and once we started putting things together, 
uh, we identified some key people such as Justin, who we wanted to be kind of keynote speakers in some certain pathways. So we have four pathways. We have the personal pathway, we have the households pathway, we have community, and we have the digital. So if you've been watching these, you will have seen the video that Carolyn did with me, which was about the personal pathway. And then we had Chad talk about the digital pathway. So tonight, Justin gets the opportunity to explain what is the community pathway? What does that really mean? What does it entail? So maybe you could tell us a little bit more about the community pathway next. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the community discipleship pathway is, uh, I, I guess, centers around that idea that we follow Jesus better when we follow him together. So there's something integral to our life of faith that happens in relationship and, and doesn't happen kind of as a Lone Ranger Christian. Mm -hmm. And that that idea of the, the adventure of walking with, which is what the, my, kind of my series of keynote videos are titled, that uh, that comes specifically from the text at the end of Luke's gospel, Easter evening, and you've got the Emmaus Road disciples. And you remember, Dan, mm -hmm. you remember the scene that yeah. they're walking away from Jerusalem and they're sad and they're confused and they're talking together about the events that had just happened. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're headed in the wrong direction and they're at it. The attitude of their heart is wrong, but, but they're walking and they're walking together. Mm -hmm. And, and Luke tells us that as they were discussing things, these things, Jesus himself walked with them. So that mm -hmm. walking with idea is that when you walk with a, a fellow traveler on the path, even when you're not getting it right, even when it's hard and confusing, uh, Jesus is present in, in that conversation. So uh, you know how the story goes. Jesus opens their minds to the scripture and uh, they end up recognizing him in the breaking of the bread and they turn around and run all the way, the seven miles back to Jerusalem, back, by the way, to community where the people who that morning had been scared and frightened and confused were gathered and saying, it's true, Jesus is alive. He appeared to Simon and the Emmaus Road disciples tell the story how they were walking on the road they told about how they recognized him in the breaking of the bread and then as they were still speaking Luke tells us Jesus himself appeared among them and said peace be with you so that that dynamic that uh, no matter what else is going around on no matter what else is going on in your life when you walk with somebody else and have this conversation around Jesus and your life even when it's confusing or difficult Jesus is there with you and that's kind of the the heart and soul of, of that transformation, that, that pathway for transformation. Mm -hmm. So uh, we got, we actually have several things. We've got the, uh, we've got classrooms. So we, there's some videos in there of people mm -hmm. who are taking visual faith material into the classroom and doing it with fourth graders and sixth graders. And that's really fun. We've, we've got, uh, let's see, there's also people who are doing it in what you might call like a neighborhood outpost, inviting mm -hmm. people into their home, following mm -hmm. Jesus out there in the world, but inviting a community around their ho home. And, and also how in a local congregation, whether it's in like small groups or even on mission trips, how you might be able to use some of these techniques, visual faith methods and techniques of engaging God's word in ways that, that enhances that journeying together idea. So it's a really wonderful set of, of videos in the community discipleship pathway. Mm. And um, Justin mentioned and, and talks about how we're all walking together and we're doing that. And I want to share a little bit about who Justin is and how we why why he, he's part of he's part of visual faith. He just doesn't know it, but he is part yeah. of it. Because actually, um, Justin is a reverend and he has over 20 years of ministry experience, most recently in Michigan, and an advanced degree in theology and culture. He left full-time parish ministry to found Next Step Press. That's what we're going to talk about in a moment and the Next Step community. And these are ministries that focus on creative and innovative experimentation to impact people in meaningful ways. Justin writes, he presents, he teaches, and he preaches at the intersection of scripture, culture, and discipleship. And he helps people delight in taking a next step. So the good, wonderful part about um, Justin and Next Step Press is he's actually the publisher of our first visual faith book. Tell us a little bit about how you helped us do that and what it means. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's awesome. So uh, it, when when you put on the Abide Virtual Retreat, 
uh, you did this wonderful thing where you allowed, you had notes pages available for people to download like a PDF and they could print them out at home. And there's so many resources. And I know after you got done with that retreat, some of the feedback you got was, hey, it was great to have all the resources, but that's like 130 pages worth of stuff we had to print. It sure would have been nice if we could have just, you know, ordered it on Amazon or something. Right. So, uh, you know, we've worked together. I've, I've Next Step Press, even just hearing you describe Next Step Press like that, in this visual faith context, you can tell why there's a resonance because some of the things that are important to me also are near and dear to visual faith ministry's heart. So uh, we've worked together on some hymn journals and things like that in the past. And I've integrated visual faith practices in, into some of my resources because I love what, what you do. But uh, you guys decided we want to try to get, a, like you, you've called it a, the movable adventure journal. And it takes all those same note pages. There's what, 165 pages, I think, in, I think in the journal, something like that. Right. Uh, yeah, so it's almost 200 pages. But that there, there's the cover. And we, we uh, because I've published in the past and know how to work that through Amazon and things like that, I, I partnered with you guys to get that out the door and available. Now, from what I understand, you can still you can still download and print some of these things in PDF because you're about resourcing people. I love that. And one of the options for resourcing people is to buy the paperback. It's eight and a half by eleven. There's a lot of blank pages for taking notes. There's quotes mm -hmm. from authors in it. There's uh, mm -hmm. whenever somebody does a video, there's a description of the video and maybe a quote from one of the speakers. Some Bible verses. So it kind of keeps all of your notes. If you're going on this year long adventure, mm -hmm. it's a place to keep everything in in kind of in one spot on your bedside table. And you might find yourself going a month or two without watching a video, and then you pull it back out and let's tackle the community discipleship pathway this month or whatever. So mm -hmm. I, I applaud you guys for seeing a need in the community and then wanting to meet that need because you're about resourcing. From my perspective, visual faith ministry resources, next steps, following Jesus. And that's what I want to be about. So it's an honor to be uh, partnering with you in this. Yeah. And, and I love Justin's comment because it's really true. And I was one of those people you know, we, for the abide retreat, it was wonderful. And we had so many pages and I never stopped to think so I'm one of the people. Oh my gosh. Especially because I got a new printer and now the, the ink costs a fortune. So if you think about it, if we have 165 pages in this journal, there's a couple great reasons to do this. As Justin said, first of all, you don't have to spend any of your ink. It would have cost me about $70 to print that 165 page document. If I print it, but I'm, you know, I'm getting it from Amazon. So the first thing is save a lot of money. The other thing that I like is if you've attended any kind of an online or going to a retreat, they usually give you a notebook and it's kind of all together. Maybe it's together. Maybe it's a folder. What we've done for you, as Justin just mentioned, is it's all in one place. You don't have to go buy a notebook and you don't have to figure out how to put it all together. It's all there. And um, it's just going to be a wonderful resource. And I encourage you to date every page that you mm -hmm. video that you watch and any pages and notes that you do, because as we said, this is a year long journey. So if you don't want to purchase the book on Amazon, as Justin said, there will be a PDF available. So let me make sure everybody understands it's 165 page PDF. So if you purchase the ticket, the early bird special of $49, that entire PDF document will be available for you. If you choose to purchase the free ticket, which is for 48 hours and you get um, you get the personal pathway for that, there will be a smaller PDF. It will be just the 47 pages that match the personal pathway. And if you purchase the free ticket and you're starting to do this and going, oh my gosh, there's so much, I want to do that. You will have the option to get uh, a $59 for the whole retreat for the entire year. So we've made it hopefully very easy, very simple. And, you know, there's just so many great ideas. I want to share, because um, I don't think Justin's seen one of the videos, but there's some, the neighborhood outpost has some phenomenal, you're going to get so excited when you see these things. Um, we have got Connie Denninger, who's one of our co-founders, talking about how she's been doing Creative Haven, which if you live in Northern Virginia and you get lucky enough to be invited to her studio, she does those about once a month. And so it's just inviting people in. We They use the visual faith resources and it's just time, community spent time together. We also have um, Stacy who took up, who read the book 
the turquoise table and decided her and her family decided we want to do that. And so they have this um, picnic table in the front of their house and they're on a main street in their neighborhood and they put out a Bible and paper and pencil and people just will stop by if they're walking. So talk about a neighborhood outpost. This is how you draw people in to discipling and just, just sharing your faith in so many you know, wonderful ideas. So you will find so many ideas that you have never thought of, I'm sure, to do. And that's the reason it's going to take you a while. You watch the video, you're going to process the video and think about, well, could I do that? You know, what, what fits, does that match where I'm at and those types of things. So I think yeah. you're going to be really excited. Go ahead, Justin. Well, I, I love that the kind of combination of grounding and teaching and also real practical application too. So I, I love that combination in, in the whole year long experience. Uh, mm -hmm. I was going to ask you, Diane. So I, I went on your webpage a, a few days ago to, to make sure I knew how to do all this myself. And it to, to get a ticket, like you said, you can buy a free one, which sounds kind of, but it, but it's, there's a complimentary ticket that you can get for 48 hours. I saw that. That's free. Uh, I had to sign into the Visual Faith Ministry webpage. So that's a membership webpage. I'm a member, so I just had to put it in. But if I hadn't been a member, I would have had to sign up to that webpage not a big deal. Just just know that that's out there. That's one of the steps. Then after you've signed in to the Visual Faith Ministry webpage, you can get a ticket right now. You could get one for free for the 48 hours. You could get that early bird special, which is for the whole year, right? That's Correct. the $49 okay. one. And if I don't buy it now, but I get into the 48 hours or the day at you know, November 15th, I want to go back and I want to buy the whole year, then it would be $59. $59. Right? So, okay. And then and, after, the, the, um, after that 48 hours, we're selling a ticket, but guess what? It's seventy nine dollars. Oh, okay. So, so fifty nine during the free weekend, yes. and then seventy nine after that. So, so in get, December, if get, you get on board, get it, get in, exactly engaged, get it now, check it out. Yeah, that's what we're trying to do. And you know, somebody, let's say a friend of yours, tells you in December, "Have you ever heard of Visual Faith? Oh my gosh, look what I'm doing and that kind of stuff." And then you go, you still be able to buy it, unlike the buy retreat which was only available prior to the retreat. We have not opened that up or sold that. This you can continue to buy. You just pay more money. So that's why we're really encouraging you. We've discounted it. It's an early bird price. Get your ticket now. You will not be, um, you will be very happy. Let's put it that way. That's yeah. Uh, again, man, that's, so you're, you're offering options and you're resourcing people. I, I love that. So yeah. it, it, it acknowledges people that want to get on board early, but it gives people options. If they're coming in a little bit later, they can, they can still join us. And that's great. Right. Now there's one other thing on there I wanted to ask you about, because mm -hmm. there was also like a licensing fee yes. uh, because you want to resource, not just individuals, but like a, if, if my small group at my church, or mm -hmm. if I, if I'm teaching a Bible class and I wanted to use this over the course of a year, is that how that licensing fee, I think it was Absolutely. $19. Is that what it was? How's that yes. supposed to work? So it works with, you have to purchase a ticket. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then if you decide, um, if you're a small group leader, we've had a couple people already say, wow, I don't have to create Bible studies for the next six months. Um, if you purchase the $19 ticket, this is so unheard of in the internet world. For $19, we give you a permission slip. Basically, it's a legal document that says you can show all the videos to as many people as you want, as many times as you want. You can download the documents and print them and share them with your friends, the resources that we have. You can show them the book. You can point them to go buy their own movable journal. If you're going to do it in a small group, you could say, buy your own journal. And then we're going to do the Bible studies, you know, that are in the book right now. And then some of the other things. So yes, it's only $19 that, like I said, it's unheard of in the industry. Most people to buy a license, to use something in your church, in your small group, in your family, what if you, um, I know some, a lot of families because of COVID weren't able to get together with grandparents. So they started doing Zoom calls. Well, guess what? If that's still your modus operandi and that's what you're doing with your grandchildren or your other children, because you don't live close or want to, purchasing the $19 ticket means you can show those videos and everybody can watch it together. Mm -hmm. Um, the kids will enjoy a lot of them. They're really kind of fun and exciting things to do. So yes, it's an awesome opportunity. And I think Justin mentioned in the beginning, we do that because we are about providing resources. We have over 2,500 resources on our website. 
So the good news is we have 2,500. The bad news is we have 2,500 because unless you spend a lot of time going through, you don't know all the things that, that we have. And 99% of them are free. Okay. There, mm. there's just some, a few that we try to, you know, charge two and $3 for something or $5 or something. And that just helps us keep our operating costs to be able to provide all this, um, for people. So it does make a big difference that we have these resources. That's who we are. That's what we're offering you the yeah. testimonial stories as well as the resources. Yeah, I, I mean, I could imagine some school staffs in running as a staff or a church staff, school staff mm -hmm. to have the videos and be able to use them on an in-service day or something like that. So that's that's, that's a great opportunity. And, you know, it, it strikes me that visual faith is putting into practice one of the things that's important to me, which is trying to get away from a one-size-fits-all discipleship model. You know, mm -hmm. so often we kind of, and I talk about this actually in, in the Adventure of Walking with video, we kind of fall back into... Uh, almost a default position of you do the same thing every time it's it becomes standardized it becomes professionalized you let the professional church workers do the discipling uh, you bring in the raw resources of the the nations and then the uh, you know, the dcs and dcos and reverends and all those people are supposed to kind of apply a one size fits all mm -hmm. kind of standardized process and and you get these kind of standard Christian people out the other end. And that's the furthest thing from what Jesus had in mind when he said, go and disciple the nations. That's a, that's a walking with word for Jesus. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a hang on the, the coattails of your rabbi. It's, it's a sit around the campfire. It's a go over here. Cause he told you to, even though you're not sure why you're going, it's take the long way around or take the most direct route straight through Samaria, even though that's really uncomfortable for you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it's not a one size fits all thing. And so the way you guys are doing the movable adventure is not one size fits all. You can mm -hmm. get it now. You can get it later. You can share it with the group, uh, mm -hmm. watch half the videos, just watch the community discipleship pathway, whatever, whatever mm -hmm. serves your needs right now is, is really where you're trying to serve us. And I really appreciate that, Diane. Thank you. Well, it, it's so, I love the way you just described that because it really evolved as we talked it through because uh, Connie, Pat, and the rest of the exec team, we know a lot of those stories of coaches of what they're doing, but most people don't know what they're doing. And so as we started to talk to those people and realize, we, well, we want to share your story. You've stepped out and you've done that. And there might be somebody that wants to know it. That's why there's 39 people. It's not just two or three, as, as Justin just said, we're saying, okay, this is it. And everybody has to march in this little path. This 39 people sharing their personal testimony of how the Holy Spirit is working, has been working and continues to work. And that's where the inspiration, the encouragement comes from. Because when you listen to that story, you're like, oh, I, I never, I would never have thought to do that. And then that causes you to slow down and spend that time uh, with the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to really transform you. So thanks for bringing that back to my mind of, yeah, that's why there's 39 people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, And they're so personable too. They're not, they're not experts. They're real life practitioners and they're not yeah. telling you the way you have to do it. They're sharing what worked for them sometimes and doesn't even work all the time. So I, I would just recorded a, a podcast, the Next Step podcast. When we do things like a hymn journal, we, we try to provide, again, we like to resource people like Visual Faith. So we have a podcast that goes with our Advent hymn journal. We're doing the, the even number hymns this year. And so I was just doing the intro podcast and I recorded with Valerie Matthias, who's a Visual Faith person, and right. Ali Bauk, who's also got a video yeah. in, in our series in the Movable Adventure here. And we were talking about the, the kind of Advent and Christmas calendar that's in that book. And I know because I heard uh, Ali on the Abide Retreat talk about the calendaring process. And so I shared with her in this podcast about how that was helpful for me, about, but also how I found over the, over the course of several months, uh, I would get a lot of blanks on my page and kind of have to catch back up. And her comment to me was, yeah, that happens to her all the time too. And she's come to the place where an empty space on her calendar is a grace space. It's a place where she knows Jesus had it covered and it was a busy day and it was a little bit crazy. And she kind of doesn't stress about those, those blank spots. So here's some that I thought was doing a great job and, and that 
turns out she's uh, got feet of clay just like I do. And yet her encouragement helped me see, you know, I'd almost be a little embarrassed to show you my calendar because it's got so many blank space, spaces. But listening to the alley talk, I'm mm -hmm. like, yeah, I can I can dub those. I can baptize those empty spaces and call mm -hmm. them grace spaces. And I'm much more okay with my visual faith calendar now. So it's that kind of example of people who it's, they're, they're not know-it-alls. They don't think they're better than you are. They don't have a silver bullet answer, but they're trying to follow Jesus. And they know that if we do this together, we're going to be better off. So let's roll up our sleeves and get at it and, and try mm -hmm. something and have some fun. And mm -hmm. I, I just, I love the visual faith community. Mm -hmm. Well, and I love that you just brought up that you're getting ready to do the Advent journal again because our movable adventure quote launches on november 3rd and then mm -hmm. that's kind of right before thanksgiving so there is a video in the personal pathway about things you can do to practice gratitude and do thanksgiving journals and things like that mm -hmm. then we go right into advent right so we've got your um hymn journals you want to do that we've got some other resources for advent there's just so many opportunities and so many different practices and when we began this justin said what we always say you know what try it try it for two or three days and if you don't like it no problem it's not it doesn't fit for you but it's so amazing when you do try something for three or four or five days and you kind of go wow this actually really works for me and i love what you just shared because it is about grace giving yourself grace you know, if you're like Allie's a busy mom of little, little, littles. <laughs> okay. And so can she do what she thought she could do before she had little kids? No, she really can't. So she's very honest in that. Um, and that's the, that's the wonderful part about the movable adventure. There's going to be videos and practices that are going to be shared with you that fit into the different celebration seasons of the year that you may already practice or wish you could do that in a different way, a new and exciting way. And that's what you're going to hear all about um, in the whole, the whole movable adventure. You know, at, at Next Step Press, one of the things we've discovered is that if something is working for you, uh, a, a practice, a discipling uh, habit, it doesn't mean it's always going to work. And and at the same way, if you try something, it doesn't really connect with you. Um, it doesn't mean it won't, it won't, it always won't work for you. It just means this time, this day, it wasn't right. Maybe give it a chance again in a, in a couple of months. If there's a video that you didn't get much out of. You've got a whole year, come back to it in a couple months, maybe watch it again after you watch some other things, maybe it'll speak to you a little bit differently. But we, we're we not the same person day in and day out as we come to God's word. We, we've kind of moved a little bit too. And so God's word speaks to us in different places at different times. So I think the, I think the first time I tried the stained glass prayer, Mm -hmm. didn't didn't really do much for me and i thought the secret code prayer was awesome and and right. after a few months after that i it probably i think it flip-flopped where the secret code prayer was okay but man that stained glass prayer that really was helpful so yeah. you know it's about giving it a try trying it again and uh understanding that you're going to fall off the horse and that's a part of the journey too you get back on and if what you were doing that was working doesn't work right now that's okay do something else Mm -hmm. And uh, don't be afraid to try something for a second or third time, because maybe it'll work mm -hmm. for you. Maybe the third time's the charm. So Right. And um, Justin just mentioned, we have four different types of visual prayers. So with four little videos. And the one that um, I am, I it was so amazed, we did a different version in the Abide Retreat, is the prayer of lamenting. Mm. And at first I thought, what? I don't like, I don't understand that. Well, once you watch Denise Miller do that, we had more comments on that prayer form. And I think it was because we're all in COVID. We're all in despair. We all need to lament. And so she gave us a way to do that in a healthy way and to spend that time with God really saying what I really feel. So you're right. There are different Everything that's in this movable adventure may work today, may not work tomorrow, but may work in January. And then the most beautiful part of this entire year is this entire adventure. We're launching on November 3rd. As we mentioned, we have um, 47 videos, 39 people. We have two Bible studies included in the journal. We already have a list of things we're adding. 
So your price, you don't pay again. We will be adding more things to this adventure. So in January, Carolyn Bira, who writes our Bible studies, she's writing seven more Bible studies. Mm -hmm. So if you do the two now, let's see, November and December, in January, there's more there's more practices and resources. So your $49 investment is growing, hmm. really is an investment. Unlike, okay, I bought this and then I never get to see anything again. We will keep adding through this entire year to include um, stories of people who may have tried something and then they write to us two months later and say, oh my gosh, this transformed my life. And Okay, great. Let's make a video. Let's do that. Let's share your testimony. Let's include that for people. So where do you find that on the internet? Nowhere. Only at Visual Faith Ministry, the movable adventure. So um, tell us a little bit about the books that you have out that you've published, because I don't need to talk about them. You should talk about them. Kind of how many books have you uh, published? Um, and tell us why we should Go and look at some of those. Uh, sure, thanks. Uh, I think I think if you count the Movable Adventure Journal, I think that was our twelfth publication in the last uh, last two years. So mm -hmm. we've had a, a busy couple of years. Uh, several of them, like there, there's a, a You Follow Me series. They're discipleship travel logs, I call them. Mm -hmm. They're daily devotions for different seasons of the year. There's an Advent one. There's a Pentecost to Easter one. Instead of Lent, it's Pentecost to Easter. We've got a couple others of those in the works as well. And they they integrate some visual faith practices. And of course, the the three hymn journals that that was have those have been really successful and really popular with the visual faith community too. It was great to work with visual faith artists and people like Valerie Matthias and and Pat Meyer and and so many of the wonderful mm -hmm. uh, visual faith artists that contribute to those hymn journals. Uh, one of my favorite books actually is called Delight. I, I have it here on my desk. I didn't know you were going to ask me, but I have it here anyway. I'm, I'm actually reading that. Right Are you I'm reading, reading it? that right now. I'm getting so much out of it. I love it. And yeah. I love the title, Delight. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Discipleship as the adventure of loving and being loved. So uh, it, it picks up on that thing that I was talking about with, with visual faith, too. It takes an approach to discipleship that recognizes it can be a struggle, but it's also... It's also supposed to be joyful and uh, it can be discouraging and it's also supposed to be fun. And repentance is at the heart of what it means to be a follower of Jesus. But it turns out, according to the Bible, joy is also at the center of what it means to be a follower of Jesus. So how do we live that out? How do we experience that? How do we wrap our minds around uh, all the different ways the Bible has for talking about delight in the life of the disciples? So those are, those are some of the ones that we have out there. And there's some others. There's some for pastors. There's some that are only digital. But yeah, you can, if you go to www.findmynextstep.org, uh, you can find our resources and, and find your way over to our blog as well. That's awesome. Thanks. So we were just talking about Advent and I'm going to love Connie's. You want to read Connie's comment? <laughs> <laughs> Connie says, I was working in my Advent journal this summer. I call it working ahead. Yes, yes, that's yes. excellent. Yeah, that's good. That's good. It's like well, grace, it's, right? It's right. There's, there, there's no law. There's no burden. If you didn't get it done before Christmas, why not do it in July? I think that's great. Absolutely. I've got some blank pages in mind too that I'm still working on. So it's yeah. Connie's we'll, we'll relaunch. Wonderful. She said to me a couple of years ago that she was starting this psalm. She was going to do um, faith art for the psalms. And so I looked at her and I was like, okay, how many psalms are you going to do? Are you going to pick some? No, I'm going to do all the psalms. And this is tells you where I was at like five years ago. And I said, Connie, that's like a five-year thing. She goes, no, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'll do them till I die. So whatever I get done is what I get done. See, I never thought... Yeah. In the, that framework, that whatever I do, whatever you do in these practices is good for right then. And you don't have to get it done and do all the Psalms and do all of those things. So that's why she says, I do the books when I have time to do them, whether it's the season to do it or not. Which is and, and it not only one of the things I think visual faith has really helped me articulate and maybe even learn is that it's not only good for that moment, it's it's. Uh, you sometimes, you guys sometimes call it like a uh, a snapshot of your time with God. You can go back, like I can go back and look at those uh, calendars that I've done over the summer with the visual faith practices. Mm -hmm. And even though it's got some grace spaces, some blank, blank spaces, I can still see 
where I was reading in scripture and what Jesus was speaking into my life. And when I look at now back at my Advent journal, getting ready to, to relaunch the light in the darkness uh, from Facebook group, there's certainly blank pages in there, but there are also devotions and, and scripture that have circles and colors. And, and, and I can see, I liked what you had said before uh, at the very beginning, Diane, you said, make sure you put, add the date to, to your movable adventure journal. When you take yes. notes, date it because you'll be able to go back and say, Oh, I remember that time. That was a really joyful time. That was a really hard time. That was, well, look, we'll look at how sweet Jesus was with me in, in that time of, of struggle or uncertainty. And, and I've got evidence of that. It's so easy to forget how good and gracious God has been to us. And visual faith practices give you a snapshot of something you can hold on to and remember when you look back at it later too. So that's another reason to have, whether you print it out at home on PDF or, or, or get it on Amazon, keep these things and look back at them over the course of the year that they'll be helpful for you then. And the helpful part is, as Connie always says, we all have spiritual amnesia. You know, right? like last week, if you would ask me what was going on in my life, I would say all these things. Now this week, I'm like, wait, what happened last week? I don't, I don't even remember or a month ago. Right. And that's the whole um beauty of all these visual faith practices. And when you date them, you're right. I go back and look and I went, oh my gosh, I did this. I don't even remember doing it. Yeah. So yeah. That's the absolute, you know, I have to say that's one of the, the actual joys of, of uh, writing and publishing too, because I can go back and read something in the delight book and go, wow, that was pretty good. Who wrote, oh, that was me. <laughs> so I'm like, I didn't, I didn't realize Jesus was doing that in my life. That's awesome. I'll, I'll, that's, that's good. Yeah, it's a cure for spiritual amnesia. <laughs> exactly. Oh. And then Jenny said, the hymn journals are great for deepening your faith walk during key church seasons of the year. Thanks for that. I, I totally agree. It really gets you focused um, on, as we always, you know, well, secular world says, the reason for the season. It really gets you focused on why are you really, what's going on at this point? Especially, I'm sure you've all seen or heard these comments now about the shortages and there will not be enough toys at Christmas. And a couple people have kind of turned that around and said, well, good, because maybe we'll spend time on the real reason we're having Christmas. Yeah. It's yeah. not about the toys. Yeah. Yes. That's yeah. Thanks. Thanks, so Jenny. That's a great comment. I love. Yeah. So again, thinking about resourcing and multi-platform. So in those hymn journals, you've, you've got the hymn text, you've got the music, you've got a devotion, you've got scripture, you've got visual faith practices all wedded together. So you're hitting it kind of on several different levels over the course of a, a week or two as you do it. So that's, oh, I, I really appreciate those things yeah. too. Thanks. Do you want to read what Karen wrote? Oh, hi, Karen. Karen's a, one of our artists in our hymn journals, too. She I said, know. Oh, yes. She's I love to look through my journaling Bibles and other journals to see my prayers and struggles and how God has walked me through and worked on my heart. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And and if you had not been recording those, it's uh, it's mm -hmm. it lost in in that kind of sense of, yeah, God was with me, but I don't I don't have the concrete. I don't have that prayer that I prayed mm -hmm. and then the comment I wrote and next to that Psalm verse. So thanks, Karen. That's a that's a great. Yeah, thought. It's a great comment. And the comment that I want to make is for me, it's leaving a legacy. I remember after mm -hmm. my um, both my grandmothers died, I was probably in my 40s. And then I started. Well, that's when I had children. They were growing up. And I thought of all these things. I was like, I wonder if she did this. And then I realized she's gone. I can't even ask her. I really don't know who she was, you know, mm. my grandmother. So for me, because I have grandchildren now, everything that I do and I date it to me is they're going to. So when they ask that question 20 years from now, well, who was my grandmother? Here's who she was. Yeah. Here's the walk with God. Here's everything that happened. So that's the real, um, you know, beauty of you're doing it for you with your time with God. But there's this long lasting mm. benefit for your family of a legacy that you're, you know, really creating. OK, somebody made a comment. Oh, go ahead. Do you want to read that one? How many of us actually date our work? Incredible way to see God's hand in your life. Yeah, it's it's something I forget to do uh, all the time. And the more I've been in this, whether it's blogging or, or publishing or some of the visual faith things, being able to date that and look back and remember what was going on has become a powerful thing. So thanks for that mm -hmm. comment. Mm -hmm. I have always dated specific pack passages in my Bibles before I knew. <laughs> well, I, yeah, if you see my my real, I call it my real Bible because it's the one I've been carrying for the last mm, 30 years. 
Yeah, there's dates all over that Bible. So to me, it's just an extension. If you're going to do any kind of um, uh, calendar journaling, devotional journaling, if you're going to do an advent calendar, you're dating that and that gets to be added to your spiritual life that, you know, you have a testimony of that. I, I love the idea of I was doing that before I knew what I was doing. You know, like exactly. I, I sometimes still feel like I'm in that category, but I mean, but, but we do, we progress, right? So I've got a better handle on now what it means to follow Jesus than I did 10 years yeah. ago. And God willing, 10 years from now, I'll have a little bit better handle. So I, yeah. I appreciate that too. Look at that comment. You want to read that one? It's great. Uh, my Bible is filled with dates and names next to passages that were important to them at the time. When I come across those memories, I send those passages to them again. Oh, that's that's a neat way of, well, that reminds me of the, we follow Jesus better when we follow him together. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, there, uh, I served as a pastor of discipleship down in, in North Texas for five years, I think. Mm -hmm. And, uh, the, the pastor there had a, he, he passed on to us a, the John Bailey's diary of private prayer. And one of the things he taught me to do in there is to inscribe the, the dates, the birth dates or wedding dates or death dates uh, of people that were important in my life. So when you went through that daily prayer, that person, like my mom on the 20th of every month, I can think of my mom, she was her birthday's November 20th. I'm January 20th. So I think of my mom on the 20th when I read that prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's also a group when I left a, a group of guys, I think at, from the men's fishing and golf retreat, you know, they gave me a Bible and they all in the Bible highlighted verses and put their names next to it. So as I went through that Bible, I could see what was kind of on, on their hearts for me or what was important to them. So mm -hmm. I love that idea of putting names and dates, putting people into your prayers, into your Bible, sharing that with them. You know, why not? Why not take a picture, send a text? Mm -hmm. uh, what can you do to take God's word and get it into your everyday life, into your everyday relationships? That's a great idea. Thanks for that. Well, and I'm going to do a spoiler alert. So we have two phenomenal testimonial stories in the movable adventure. One woman bought the... Um, Okay, hold on. She did the uh, New Testament, pretty sure. And she started. Neither that or the Old Testament. Yeah. No, I'm one thinking, of them. I think she just did the New Testament. Okay, all right. She um, did Bible journaling in that Bible for over almost three years. And that's what she gave to her daughter on oh. her graduation from high school. Oh, wow. And it's exactly what you just said, because she's she was writing and she's going to talk about in the video. So I'm like I said, spoiler, but I want you to listen to it um, about, you know, things would happen and a verse would come up or happen in their family. And she would make notes. This is what happened on this day. And this is why or instructions like when you get really depressed and upset, I want you to come to this thing. And then she's got drawings in it. It's phenomenal. Then we have another mother who wrote out the Psalms in a journal and did art all around it that was her gift to her daughter graduation of college i mean mm. what what a phenomenal idea you know to even i never would have thought of that that's you know anyway there's so many wonderful things can you tell we're excited about the movable adventure we want you to join us we want you to walk with us we want to walk with you we want to be there we've established this phenomenal Visual Faith Community. We have a great website you can go to. If you need prayer during this retreat, you can send a request, prayer at visualfaithmin.org, and you will get prayer. We have a whole team of people praying. Um, you can make comments in our Facebook group, like, oh, I just watched this video, and oh my gosh, this, or if you have questions and things like that. But we really are a community, and we are all walking with each other and walking together towards. Jesus. So as we wrap it up, do you have any last little points you want to make, Justin? Well, maybe just this one that it, that my experience of the visual faith community also online, it definitely in, in face-to-face, -face, but also online is that there are no like 
faith heroes. <laughs> no, no one thinks they're awesome and, mm -hmm. and and knows it all. And and also there's always this constant, like like you just said, this woman wrote out all the Psalms and did artwork for us. And I, part of me goes, oh man, A, I wish I would have thought to do that. B, <laughs> I'd never have time to, you know, how I'm, I'm not that. So you immediately feel like smaller because someone else did something awesome. But, but that's not at all what the visual faith community is like. Right. It's like, oh, that was a great idea. How could I apply that with the time and space that I have? What, what does it look like in my life? And so uh, the, whether it's the movable adventure or the visual faith community online or, or the stuff that you'll run into with visual faith people, in the next step community as well, it's, it's all about how do you do something that fits where you are right now? How can you take that and learn from it and work it into your everyday life? And don't try to, you know, don't hurt yourself swinging for the fences. Don't, don't, don't decide tomorrow you're going to write out all of the Psalms by Sunday so that you can give them to your five-year-old. <laughs> You know, maybe write one verse and pack it in as lunch and call that good because that's awesome. Uh, what? How do you apply it to your everyday life? So that's absolutely a part of the joy Excellent of doing that point. together. Excellent point. We do not want you to feel bad about anything you see and go, well, I can never do that. I'm not artistic. I don't have any time. That's not the point. The yeah. point is you're listening and God and the Holy Spirit will work in you if that's what he wants you to do. He'll figure it out for you. You don't have to necessarily know all that right away. You know, I just I just found the sticky note. I, we moved fairly recently, and this sticky note's got to be a, at least a year and a half old because it was when I was writing the Delight book, but I still have it stuck on my desk. And it says, when you remove a burden, you open up the possibility of delight. And, and I think that's that's what we're talking about here is if I think I have to all of a sudden perform up to the standard of someone in visual faith ministry, it's, that's a burden I can't live up to. But when I don't have to have that burden, now I can I can roll up my sleeves. I can try it. I can find out what it means. Who knows? Maybe someday I will write out the Psalms and give uh -huh. it to one of my kids. It probably yeah. won't be this year, but taking a small next step, you never know where that might take me. So when, when you remove a burden, you open up the possibility for delight. And I think that's, mm -hmm. uh, I experienced that with you guys. Thank you so much. Well, I just want to remind everybody as we close that this entire adventure is about spiritual transformation and spiritual transformation is about opening your heart and your mind as Justin just mentioned and allowing the Holy spirit to take hold, take over, and take control of each next moment and small step. And visual faith practices can open the door for conversations and practices of faith. Perhaps you never even thought about the ways to be a disciple in your community, as we've been discussing this evening at, in the community pathway. So we're just going to leave you with, won't you join us on the movable adventure? We totally invite you. We would love to have you be with us. And we just hope that the Holy Spirit will nudge you and you'll click and you will sign up and be with us. Thank you so much, Justin. Uh, it was a great evening again, talking to you. We have Always a pleasure, Diane. Thank movies. you. Yeah. And um, just going to close with in two weeks, that will be the night before we launch, we will be having conversations, encouragement and inspiration on our next Tuesdays at eight. And Dion Lovestead Jones will be my guest. And she awesome. will be sharing all about the household's pathway. And as I said, that's the night before we launch on Wednesday, November 11th. So we so hope that you will join the Movable Adventure journey. Thank you.